Uh, so this is a um, study that is presented by Dr. Lacoise. It's going to be a poster. Um, and again, uh, this is a collaborative work with Dr. Papa Manuel's lab based on their studies and the, the uh, um, patients that they had sequenced in their prior studies. Uh, so we did a analysis of a large cohort of MDS patients uh, and um, essentially looked at the significance of the variant allele frequency of SF3B1 because SF3B1 mutations in MDS are considered class-defining events. Uh, the ICC does require a 10% minimum VAF, or variant allele frequency, for MDS to be considered SF3B1 mutated MDS. And the WHO enforces a 5% uh, variant allele frequency. Again, uh, you know, the point is not to compare the two classifications, but really to learn about the relevance of this, uh, this variant allele frequency. Uh, and you know, it's very interesting. Actually, what we learned is that patients that have low SF3B1 VAF, which we defined as having less than 10% variant allele frequency, um, they tend to have a, a different commutation pattern than those that have a large clone with SF3B1 mutation. Uh, you know, particularly of interest, uh, there tends to be a higher frequency of TP53 mutated um, uh, mutations in this group with low variant allele frequency SF3B1. And then the other thing is when we applied the IPSS or IPSS molecular score to this cohort of patients, the patients that have low VAF SF3B1 tend to have a higher IPSSM score compared to those that have a higher SF3B1 VAF. And you know, this kind of is in line with the idea that you know, when you have a large SF3B1 clone that's driving the disease, that's probably associated with favorable risk disease and you know, those patients do better. Whereas when you have a small clone and another dominant clone that is really the driver of the disease, um, then those patients may not behave as well as the, you know, the disease may not behave as well as those patients that have SF3, truly SF3B1 mutated uh, MDS.